Welcome to Lab 20, the Iron Copper Switcheroo Lab. This is copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. This is pure iron. You're going to perform a single replacement reaction. And at the end of the reaction, you'll get back a precipitate of pure metallic copper. And from your measurements of your iron and your copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, you will predict which one of these is the limiting reactant. From the limiting reactant, you'll predict how much copper you should get back and compare that to your actual lab measurement. That's our primary goal of this lab. A secondary goal is to get you used to filtering. This lab and the next three labs will require some form of filtration of a precipitate. And we want to make sure that you're comfortable with that by the time we have you do the copper cycle lab. Uh, let me explain how to do it. First step of the lab has you measure out 60 milliliters of water. Notice that I'm really closer to 70 here. Don't worry about the volume of the water. As long as you've got more than 60 and less than 70, don't spend a whole lot of time trying to get that perfect. Once you have your water, pour that into your beaker. Your next step is to mass out approximately five grams of copper two sulfate pentahydrate. And this is where you need to be careful about which weigh boat you're using. The class prior to you uh, used one of the weigh boats for iron and one of the weigh boats for copper. And the copper one will probably have a little blue dust in it and the iron one will have a little bit of brown dust in it. And so make sure you keep matching the weigh boat with the correct salt. So as per usual, you've got your scale here and make sure you zero it. Once it's zero, throw your weigh boat on there. Hopefully this is the one with the blue dust because you're going to be putting blue salt in it. And then zero it again. You can always cover it with your hands to steady it. We're going to try to get close to five grams. This was pretty easy for me to do to get within five hundredths of a gram of the copper two sulfate or of the five grams. So go ahead and take a note here. For number two, add plus or minus 0 0.05 grams. So you don't have to sweat getting 5.000 exactly. Please take note of my setup here. I've got my largest ring on the bottom, my middle ring here in the middle, and it acts as a safety ring to keep my beaker from tipping over if I bump it. I've got my mesh here and then four finger widths below that to my Bunsen burner. In the background here I have my smallest ring and that smallest ring is meant for your funnel. If you just pop your funnel in there, we'll put the filter paper in there later and we'll have something convenient to hold the whole contraption. The solubility of copper 2 sulfate can be aided with a little bit of heat. So all I'm going to do here is take my copper 2 sulfate, put it into the water, make sure everything comes out of the weigh boat, add a little bit of heat, grab my glass stir bar and stir until I have a transparent blue solution and all my copper 2 sulfate is dissolved. Whatever you do, don't boil your solution. Keep your Bunsen burner nice and low. I closed my carburetor down all the way until it turned yellow and then open until the flame turned yellow and then I opened it back up again just enough to get the flame to be all blue again and then down here at the bottom I closed my spindle valve so that the top of the flame is just tickling the bottom of the beaker. You don't want to boil. If you do start to see simmering just take your Bunsen burner and set it aside. Once your solution is starting to simmer and you've been stirring it for a few minutes, go ahead and turn your Bunsen burner off, set it to the side, grab your beaker tongs, they're the ones with the rubber coating, and set this guy aside on the bench top to cool, even if it's not perfectly transparent yet. At this point, weigh the 0 0.750 grams of iron. All right, just repeating the same procedure you've done over and over and over this year. Put the weigh boat on, then zero it. And I know your lab instructions say measure out exactly 0 0.750 grams of the powdered iron. That's going to be impossible, especially with wind in the lab. And you can already see that 
thousandth of a gram decimal place moving around. So just try to get within five thousandths of a gram. So for step seven where it says mass out exactly 0 0.750 grams, add a plus or minus 0 0.005 grams. All right, I've got to admit, this is not easy. Just do your best. Hopefully it won't be as windy in the lab um, the day that you do it. Once you have your iron measured out, write that number, of course. All these numbers are going to be recorded on the data table we've given you on the back side of your lab. And add that to your copper. Here's my iron. Here's my copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate solution. It's beautiful blue. And I'm going to add the iron and stir. After several minutes of stirring, on the bottom, you should have a clump of copper that's accumulated. And uh, solid pure copper and you can also tell there's still copper dissolved in the solution because the solution is still blue. This is where we move on to the filtering part of the lab which will be an important step for the next three labs. This one included making it four in a row where filtering is important. All right. the problem is how do you fit a circle filter into a cone shaped funnel. Well, it's not origami. You just fold the filter paper in half and crease it. Fold the fil filter <laughs> paper, I almost said filter paper, in half again. And now you've got to write your name on this with pencil. Don't do it in ink because the ink will run. Those carbon atoms in that pencil lead weigh something. And because of that, you write your name on the filter paper before you weigh the filter paper. You need to subtract this later on the day after this lab. Your filter paper is going to be all dry. It's going to be full of dry copper and you'll measure it dry. We're going to put this in a drying oven. And so you need to know the mass of the dry filter paper that you can subtract from it later. Make sure you write the mass of your dry filter paper down. Don't forget this step. If you forget to do your filter paper, then you've got to weigh 10 pieces of filter paper, find an average, and it's just more work and not as accurate. You've weighed your filter paper after you wrote your name on it, and then if you look at the four layers, one, two, three, four layers of filter paper. Take three of them, pull them aside, and you'll notice your filter paper is now in the shape of a cone and should fit into that funnel. We've given you a squirt bottle, and we found that if the filter paper is popping out of the funnel like that, wetting it helps to keep it stuck in the funnel. And it's okay that you wet it th at this point because um, all we're caring about is the copper that's caught in the filter at the end of the lab. And we're going to dry it and all the water will evaporate anyways. So here is your copper and your copper 2 sulfate solution. And we'll pour that into the filter until it gets to the top. And keep doing that until you've poured all of your filtrate out. And the last step will be to use the, to use the squirt bottle again to clean out that beaker, spray all the copper out of the beaker. At this point, I've poured all of the solution into the filter paper, and you can see my uh, what eventually here is going to be called my filtrate, F-I-L-T-R-A-T-E, filtrate. Uh, your filtrate is what you catch in the filter. The solution, being all aqueous, should pass completely through the filter. 
And at this point, you take your squirt bottle and the rest of your filtrate and you squirt it. You try to get all of those copper atoms out of that beaker until your beaker is clean and everything that was solid has been squirted into the filter paper. Then you just have to wait. You wait for the, uh, for the solution to pass through the filter paper and we'll wait for that to happen. I'll show you what to do last. You'll notice that the color of the copper is a little more red than the color of the iron to differentiate between the two. The longest part of this lab is just waiting for the solution to pass through the filter and for the filtrate in this uh, case, what's captured in the filter, the copper, uh, to dry out. All right, so I'm gonna take that filter out of there very carefully you're going to find where your name is and flip that over so that your name is on the outside. Can't tell you how important that is. And then you're going to come over here to the drying oven. You haven't used this yet this year. You'll find a piece of paper here probably with your teacher's name on it and you'll place it on the piece of paper and you're going to come back the very next day pull this out of here it'll be dry and you'll weigh it and subtract from that weight the mass of the filter paper to get the mass of the copper that's inside last step clean up we've got a couple beakers in the center of the room this stuff cannot go down the drain because the copper is toxic to aquatic life. Once you've poured that into your blue solution, your copper ions back into the waste bin, come back to your table, grab both of your beakers, bring them over to the main sink where I want you to wash both of your beakers. You don't have to dry them, but wash them out. Bring your beakers back to your table find some paper towel and wipe out both of the way boats so that the way boats are clean and dry for the next period. All right, the rest of the project is described on the rubric and good luck with this one. Have fun today.